I always liked bicycles, like any young kid. Um, and then when I went in the army, I saw a Hetchins curly frame bicycle in the barracks. Uh, it had little curly stays at the back and beautiful lugs on it. And um, I just liked the engineering. And I found the chap who was riding it. Uh, he came from Malvern. I was living uh, in Birmingham at the time, or well, as my parents were, and I, we were riding to and from Litchfield. And I got involved with that because I just loved the bicycle and getting out the freedom of it all. That's fantastic. The freedom was there. So off I went. Fausto Coppi, Pursuit Champion of the World, our record holder, Tour de France winner, Tour of Italy winner. He was just, to me, an elegant rider on the bike too as well. He had something charisma about him that, well, there's been some grand champions since, but to me, he was, he was the one. Undoubtedly, when Greg LeMond won by eight uh, seconds, we were covering for Eurosport from the studio in London. We weren't live on site like we've been since then. And my producer kept saying, build it up, build it up. It could still go down to Sunday in the time slot. I said, no, 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 there's no way. Finon's going to win. He's into Paris, down from Versailles, into the finish, and there'll be no problem. He's going to win the thing. And then it became apparent that Le Mans was actually going so quickly, um, and then Finon was starting after him, that Fignon was looking over his shoulder like, here I'm in Paris, and then coming down the finishing straight, I had the people checking on the watch, my watch, we were in the studio, there were about 10 or 15 people there after three weeks working, and down the, the finish straight, Champs-Élysées, we counted out, and Le Mans won by eight seconds. And I was sitting on a chair, I leant back, the chair collapsed, and I was there on the floor, it was one of the most dramatic moments of the Tour de France, because once in a while I stopped talking. <laughs> Oh, it's a bit difficult. Um, I broke 12 national long-distance records on a tricycle in some lab ball uh, because I was quite a useful uh, rider on two wheels. And then I had to uh, be a rep on the road for Philip Cycles, and I went on to work for rallying people like that. So I decided to ride a racing tricycle. Uh, and I broke the Lands End John Legrette's record uh, twice. I broke the 1,000-mile record, but I suppose the 50-mile record, which I did in one hour and 57 minutes, that's you know, over 25 miles an hour, uh, would be something I was proud of. I was, I was proud of the Lands End John Legrette. You know, two days, 10 hours and 58 minutes to ride uh, that distance, 874 uh, um, miles. It was, yeah, that, that was good, but to me, I think the 50-mile record was better. I suppose working for Philip Cycles um, gave an opportunity of knowing the industry. I was still racing as a, as a time trialist, but I had to uh, stop my time trialing and, and become a rep on the road. And I just was with the sport. I loved the sport. And subsequently, when Philips uh, were taken over by Rally, I came down into uh, London and worked for Temple Press, where they had a vehicle with public address system on top. And I went out to... Um, a, 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 but it's a motor rally thing. And I, they said, oh, come on, will you please do the, uh, the announcing? I thought, so I took over uh, some books, which I read about um, uh, veteran cars, and that's where it started. And then the cyclists got to know about it, and suddenly I became a public address commentator, and in later life, a television commentator. Well, I think so, because I was involved from the very start. Um, rally a well-known brand in Britain was not known in Europe and uh, with the European community starting up and opportunity to export bikes into Europe the managing director of Rally, Tom Barnsley, said we must get the brand known there. It was known in Holland but not across the rest of Europe and so the idea was to put a racing team into Europe uh, to promote the Rally brand and I had been the commentator at the Skull Six Day Bicycle Races and I'd seen a chap called uh, Peter Post riding the six days. He was the Kaiser. He was an amazing guy. And when he stopped racing, he became the director of the sporting side of the six day in, uh, in London. And we were looking for an opportunity to go into Europe. I went across to uh, interview Eddie Merckx's uh, manager uh, and his team. We looked at another team, a, a German team, that was uh, an opportunity for us to take over. Uh, we decided in the end that we'd go with Peter Post 
the Dutchman because we had a little small base in, in Holland at the time and it took off from there. And the one thing about Peter Post was that he was a manager. He drove that team, he set standards which are being emulated by uh, teams today. And many of the riders that rode with that rally team are now manager of teams in the sport and he, he was something new in the sport. He was strong, he was uh, determined to succeed because some of before then had been rather shambolic. But Peter put discipline in, he demanded of the riders what he knew was possible, and he set a new standard for the rest of the sport that's followed ever since. I was a bit gutted. Uh, great company. Uh, I enjoyed working uh, with my colleagues there. When I joined the company, uh, we had 6,500 employees. Uh, it was a 64 acre site in Nottingham. But progressively, the markets which Rally were selling to were beginning to be uh, intruded by cheap products from the Far East. It's happening in many other industries. And uh, so now Rally's got maybe what, 500 employees, a shadow it's all myself, but the brand name is still there. And they're doing what so many other people have had to do, bring stuff in from elsewhere, put their brand on it, but also still have the expertise, which does exist in this country, uh, to advise people on what products uh, are required by the marketplace. But, uh, well, that's history. Things change. A very French word, but it's universal. It's all over the world, doping, in all sports. But one thing cycling's been doing over the years is trying to stamp it out. Uh, I know um, what many riders said many years gone by, that they would like to stop it. Tom Simpson, a very good friend of mine, he told me what was going on. And unfortunately, Tom died, as we know. Uh, and thank goodness, cycling is doing all it can and other sports are now recognising they have a problem too as well. Uh, in the old days it was riders doing little things to help themselves, like Land and John O'Groat's record many years ago was broken by a man on a penny farthing who was taking cocaine openly, but subsequently they started to stamp out these stimulants. Uh, but we're now getting to an area when chemicals are being used, not by the riders, but in, coming from I think the doctors and the people who want to make the, the people uh, performing their sport. And we only got to look back at the swimming, for instance, from East Germany, the things that were going on there that we found about. So it's not just in cycling, but the whole of the world must stamp these things out. And so I'm glad that action is being taken now, not only for the sport, but also for the competitors too. Since Eurosport started covering uh, the Tour de France and also Channel 4 uh, taking on the Tour de France uh, certainly the audience has grown for the sport and I get lots of letters from people who don't ride bikes but then start riding bikes who have seen the countryside to which the races go and want to go out there so it isn't just the sport it's interested in the, the actual cycling itself and that's growing um, the competitive aspect in the UK though is going downwards we don't have the races we used to have um, so now the riders have to go overseas into Europe to ride over there. But that's not a bad thing. That's where the competition is. So yes, I'm glad to see that interest is there from what I call the general public, uh, whilst the riders will then respond to it and go and race overseas, and we'll have some more grand champions, uh, like we've had, uh, like Tommy Simpson, world champion, and I look forward to that. Lance Armstrong is uh, the hot tip to go for the sixth, which will be a record. I have a doubt about it. I don't think his team is as strong as it has been over recent years. It's getting weaker. Uh, and people like Jan Ulrich, now going back to telecom, will be much stronger, more determined. Uh, so I think it's possible that Ulrich could win the Tour de France next time round. I think we need a change. And uh, it could be Ulrich there. We shall see.